consequences, and it often comes along with distortion, distortions in thinking patterns like denial. Prior, primary, the first one, primary just means that it is not caused by something else. It can be influenced by a mental illness, anxiety or depression, for instance. It may even have uh, been the reason a person started using, maybe to mask those symptoms. Often you hear people talking about self-medicating. However, if you take care of the mental health condition, the addiction will continue to persist. Now, the sad part of all this is that the drinking or drug use, if drinking and drug use continues to persist, the depression and anxiety will just inevitably come back and will oftentimes get worse. Sadly, those who have mental health and substance use problems will need to address both the mental illness and the addiction. And if one is left untreated, the other one will severely affect the other. Chronic means that it just not, does not go away. The disease may be put into remission. People do it all the time. But as of yet, there is no brain surgery, no pill, no therapeutic tool that will cure addiction. And progressive means that it just does not get better. It gets worse and worse. People with the disease of addiction do not all of a sudden become better at controlling their use even after years and years of sobriety. This disease, is, if untreated, is potentially and often fatal. And we're gonna focus more on the progressive and the fatal components because herein lies the connection to suicide. Let's quickly just kind of take a look at the uh, biopsychosocial symptoms that occur in middle and late addiction. I want people to notice how similar these symptoms that I'm gonna be talking about here are to the risk factors and the warning signs that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later. I hope that many of you leave here thinking that I was redundant it's going, to, it's going to appear that as if I'm repeating myself a lot in this presentation because a lot of the side effects for drug and alcohol are exactly the same as the risk factors and warning signs for suicide. So let's talk about a little bit about middle and late stage of addiction. All right, it's important to note that these are just themes. You do not have to meet all of these criteria to be any one particular stage. Some can stay in the middle stage of addiction for decades and others may progress through the middle stage and into late stage of addiction in, in months or even weeks. I, I know 17 year olds that are in the late stage of addiction. In the middle stage of addiction, some common using patterns are that the person starts to lose control of how much and how often they use. Once they start, it's hard to predict how much they're going to use and what their behavior really is going to be. This is why people who are in late stage of addiction get multiple DUIs. They start out telling themselves they're not gonna drive or they're gonna stop at two drinks. And at the end of the night, they've gone well beyond those limits and are behind the wheel again. Their behaviors become unpredictable, not only to the outside observer, but to themselves as well. They build up tolerance to the drug. Tolerance is, uh, just means that it takes more of the drug or a stronger dose of the drug to get the same high. They may switch to another drug or start mixing drugs and hoping to get a stronger effect. They may change the route in which they take the drug. They may start out maybe by orally ingesting a drug, move to snorting, and then end up 